Alright. So, this is something I built about 20 years ago. I used to be a respiratory therapist, and I kind of had the idea that I wanted to build a cheap ventilator for the third world. So, I developed this. It was designed to be uh, 12 volts. You run it in a vehicle, or you could run it in a hospital. Um, it was based on the principle of always having a bagging unit around anyways. Anybody innovative, there's always a bagger around. So, I thought, why reinvent the wheel? This has been used for decades and it's proven. So, the, basically, the, the concept of the bagger is delivering the oxygen in a safe way. Uh, I went with that. Now, this particular unit um, uses a 5 5 timer to control the interval. The tidal volume is controlled by the placement of this disc. And the flow is controlled with this rather primitive rheostat that I had to make. And it works okay, but I could never get much more than 650 cc's uh, for a tidal volume out of it. And then my life got busy and I kind of forgot about it. I put it down in the crawl space for 20 years and uh, and COVID-19. In the course of my trying to figure out how to build that, I stumbled across this. Now this was sort of designed to free up your hands and beg a person. I guess meant for ambulances or busy nurses, you know, change IV fluids, that kind of thing. This might be useful in the present situation because it keeps you away from the head of the bed and you can still beg. With this wedge, you can titrate with a Wright's respirometer the, the tidal volume you're giving. I've got measurements down there, so you can control the tidal volume while bagging. It's kind of nifty. And it frees up your hands. And get about 900 cc's out of this uh, pool noodle head. It's a pool noodle cross section. Years later, uh, when I started reading stories about how they're running out of ventilators in Italy and they're having to triage payments, uh, patients and, and make rather horrible decisions that uh, we've never had to make in this country, uh, I started thinking, well, if things get bad enough, you know, I mean, this is not medical grade. It's not made by Kurt and Bennett or, or Engstrom or any of those guys, but it might do in a pinch. So... Basically, the heart of this thing is actually a barbecue rotisserie motor used as a timer. This is from Princess Auto. It's 25 bucks. It does about 2 RPM a minute. And from that, we developed the idea of having the wheel with slots and these little fins to actuate a switch. Now, uh, the, heart, the other heart of this system is this 12-volt uh, pneumatic uh, solenoid which basically the idea behind this whole ventilator is I'm no longer constrained by, by electrical uh, needs. Um, all hospital rooms have uh, oxygen lines, air lines, suction. So if I can utilize the 50 PSI air line in a hospital room, I can power this unit. So we have a 12 volt solenoid here hooked up to uh, my compressor, which is set at 50 PSI. Through, uh, we have some 1 8 tubing here, and this is a T going to a little control valve. Now, this thing here is a single action actuator. It's basically a pneumatic cylinder. It has a spring inside that causes it to return. But because it's coming back, you need a way to vent the gases inside on the return stroke. So that's what this little T is. It also uh, vents during inspiration, but not enough to cause a problem with the compression stroke. Uh, one of the interesting things I discovered when building this was I originally placed the T back up here to make it look better, and all the gases went out and there was no compression stroke, so I moved it back here and it seems to work okay. Uh, this is the single action actuator uh, from Princess Auto. I think it was like 32 bucks. 
um, connected. I had to use an endotracheal connector because I had I'm not a machinist and I didn't have anything connected to this dowel very easily. Um, basically goes through a bearing of black pipe. Uh, this is a uh, 5 8 dowel. And this is polyethylene foam that typically people throw away as garbage. But uh, it's kind of tough stuff and you can weld it together and uh, kind of do amazing things with it. Now this platform it's built on is designed to step back to reduce tidal volume. At the max setting where it presently is, I can get about 800 cc's. If I want to reduce it, shut off the rotisserie motor here, pull these pins. I've got measurements set here. Put the pins back in and turn it back on. Then we get a reduced tidal volume. I don't know what is that. What, 700? Now, the wheel has different colors for different uh, breaths per minute. These fins are cut from the lid of a Tim Hortons can. And the spots I cut in with my little uh, uh, saw. So it's a very thin cut. And the idea is, if you want to change the rate, I'll let that do that final breath. You just move the fins. So currently, I'm at a rate of 12 breaths a minute. So if I want to go down to 10, I go to the black, or basically the cardinal points of the compass. Take one out. Now, how do you control the FiO2 with this setup? Basically, we would have a Y connector feeding into the Lerdol bagger, uh, and one feeding to air, one feeding to oxygen. Using a basic algebraic calculation, you can determine the FiO2 by multiplying the airflow times 0.21, adding that number to the oxygen flow, and dividing it all by the total flow. That will give you the FiO2. Now for PEEP, I don't have one, but Laredol does manufacture a PEEP valve attachment that goes over the exhalation valve over here. And typically it would go to a PEEP valve. If you're running out of PEEP valves, you can use this tubing, run it into a bucket of water, 10 centimeters deep, 15, 5, whatever you want. And that's about it. Um, Oh yeah, one other thing. I played with various shapes for this head. And this is about the best I could come up with. I tried using this ball, but it only got about 700 cc. So the square shape seems to work a little bit better. The wiring for this system is very basic. So what we have here is a 12 volt adapter. I think it's 200 milliamps. Yeah, 200 milliamps. Um, the positive and negative are in here. The positive runs to this yellow wire on one side of the solenoid. The ground from here runs to this switch. And then when the switch closes, it completes the circuit, starts close to the solenoid and opens it up. And yeah, this is a basically this AC connector for the uh, rotisserie motor. And uh, that's about it.